Hey there, welcome back to the studio. So today we are going to work on our holiday cards and here is one that I'm making for my friends and family this holiday season. And as you can see, it is what it is. It's got some holiday lights with a, a line that uh, attaches them and it says happy holidays in the center. I actually went when I made my string, I just went all the way around the back. Anyways, this is what I'm going to show you how to do, and uh, hopefully you like this. So I'm going to set this off to the side. Here's my cardstock. It's already pre-bent. This is a Strathmore um, 400 series card I bought, I don't know, 100 of them on Amazon for 20 bucks or something like that last year when I did this. Uh, and I, I went ahead and I made some little light bulbs here to see kind of what size I would need to fit six onto this card. And I put them out here just to kind of take a look. And as it turns out, I think the smallest one that I had was probably the best one. And so then I went ahead and traced that and made another light bulb. Actually, I made a couple of light bulbs. So they're just slightly different. And uh, then just traced them onto here in some random kind of a fashion. Okay, so there you go. I hope you can see that. I can't see it on my screen. I hope you can see it. I just did very quickly the outline of I'm going to grab a brush here, and where's my towel, get it ready, and this is how I did it. Like I said, this is so simple. I'm going to use my Winsor Newton set here. Let me open that up. There we go. I'm going to set it off to the side, and I'm going to start by doing the bulb bases. I guess that's the way to say that there. So I'm just going to take some sap green and getting that wet. You can see it there, some sap green. I'm going to mix into that some viridian. Just going to give it, I don't know, I, I mix the two of those and it gets really kind of an electrical cord uh, green color, I guess is the way, the way to say that. I don't know if there's a better way. And I'm just going to make a, a an arc where I think the bottom of the light bulb should be. And just fill in that space. There we go. Boom, there's one. Here's my next one. There we go. And they don't have to be super precise. We're going to come back and touch these up. I mean, we want to stay in the lines, but we don't have to do anything ridiculously uh, precise with these. If your line where the bulb is is a little straighter, well, you know what? Maybe the way you're looking at that bulb, the bottom side of that bulb looks a little straighter. I can understand that. Uh, I think anybody could understand that. I'm just going to mix up a little bit more color here. I'm going to do the ones on the other side. There we go. Get some of that good viridian in there with that Sap green. I'm going to flip this all the way around so that I'm always painting with a bulb towards me. Instead of having to reach over. And I always do this. I don't know why I do this. I, I, I paint the one. I'm right handed. I paint the one on the right hand side first. Which means then I have to reach over that to paint the rest. I don't know why... I don't know how I ever developed that habit. Does anybody else do that? That's the weirdest thing. I, I, I noticed that I did that, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And I, why do I do that? And then as you've seen, I, I end up putting my hand in whatever I'm painting and I get a little frustrated with it. Actually, I've learned to live with having palm prints and knuckle prints and fingerprints in my paintings. There we go. We're just dropping those on. I'm going to turn it right side up again. 
There we go. And I'm going to continue to mix a little bit of this paint because as this dries, I'm going to come back and just add a little bit to it to give it a little bit of depth. Maybe I'm too close for you now. Um, so let's see. I'm going to have the light coming in from this side. So I'm going to see if I can touch just a little bit more on this side like that of our light ba uh, light base what do you, I don't know what you call these light light base I guess this is as good a thing as I can come up with let's see the lights coming in from over there shadow over here like that and while this is still wet it's gonna blend in it's gonna give us a nice soft edge there make it look you know, maybe kind of like it's a little bit rounded, something a little bit more natural anyways. I'm going to do this. See, now I'm trying to reach over again. Let's see. I've got my light coming in from that side, so I'm just going to go like that. This one might get a little bit more shadow on it. And this one's tipped. There we go. Maybe a little bit more color even on that one. There we go. Our bases are just about done. We're, we're getting there. We're almost done already. Look at that. Whoa, too far in. There we go. Okay, so now we can start deciding what we want to do. In my uh, trial, I've got a couple of blues and yellows and reds. I like the blues and yellows and reds. Um, I think I'm going to stay with those. I was thinking maybe I should do something a little different, but I like the reds. Reds seem very festive. I like the blue that's there. Let's see, I'll use this blue. So I'm just going to, I'm just pre-mixing. I guess I should show you. I'm just pre-mixing these while I'm talking. I'm wasting time, really. I'm stalling a little bit until these dry just a bit. Okay, so I've got a blue here, and I actually used this cerulean blue on a different one. So I'll mix a little bit of cerulean blue. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I had to make my orange. I'll just use this. I had a brighter orange. I'll use this orange and a nice yellow here. I'll put it on this side. There we go. It's been a while since I made a video. I keep forgetting to look up to see if you guys can see exactly what I'm seeing. And I think I've got my colors there. I just need to decide which one goes in which spot. I'm going to start with my red. I'm going to try and bring it over here. And I want it to be a little bit watery and the reason for that is I'm going to put on just like we did with the the light bases I'm going to put on a little bit of red on the bottom to indicate uh, you know a little dark airy little shadow uh, a low light I guess is a better better way to say it in this case um, and I want to be able to get that color on there in its fullest. There we go. Uh, in its fullest and not have to uh, use a different color. Try and get it on there. I'm just going to drop a little bit in here. Hopefully it's not too wet. Just right around that edge. Might have been a little early to do that. Let me go with my blue here. Let's see what I can do with the blue. This is uh, Windsor Blue, Windsor and Newton, Windsor Blue. It's quite a strong blue, as you can see, very vibrant. I think in this application it works out really well. And right on around, there we go. All right, and now 
can punch that up just a little bit. Let's see, maybe I can do, I'm going to, I'm going to mix just a little bit of Prussian blue in with that Windsor blue. Maybe that will change the color just ever so slightly. Uh, you know what I'm going to do though? I'm going to come and I'm going to paint this next one. I'm going to do this one red also. Looks like I still have a little bit of blue on my brush. Let me get that off. I think it'll be okay. There we go. Good, good, good. Just staying right on that line. But you don't have to stay right on that line as long as we're close. Everybody looks at it and they'll they'll know exactly what it is. It's a bulb. Nobody will pick this card up and scrutinize it and say, hey, you were just inside the line or you were just outside the line. They'll all pick this card up and go, well, that's a fantastic looking card. I can't believe you made that. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to mix my red here. What am I doing? Red? No, no, no. Let me go back to my blue. See if I can get just... I'm just, just touching on it, on our little shadow side here, a little bit of my blue, I want to darken that up just a little bit, there we go, actually that's working out pretty good I think, let me, let me mix a little bit more over here, there we go, yeah that's looking good, and then that's going to Oh yeah, I like that. And then it's gonna flow up there, and it really looks like it's uh, it's got some depth, some roundness to it. Rinse my brush off really well. Come in and paint a little low light area on this one. This one's tipped a little different direction. We'll get a little different bit of it there. There we go. And you can see that one looks pretty, really pretty round. Well, maybe you can see it. Let's see. There we go. I can see that one looks really pretty round there. Look at how good the blue one came out. This one's trying hard. We can come up and do our ones on the top now. I'm going to use my Windsor Orange. Let's see. Let's go up to here. Ooh. I should tell you, I'm moving a little quickly, I should tell you, this is the easy part of this card. Boy, I tell you, I struggled, struggled, struggled. I'm not really good with calligraphy. And I looked at, wow, I bet I looked at 20 different fonts online and I tried maybe five or six of them. That I thought I'd be able to to write out when I when I wrote Happy Holidays here. I'm not super happy about it. I don't think I did a bad job, but maybe with a couple of more years of practice, I could get something else in there. Uh, but that was hard for me. We'll talk about it more when when we get to that. But I did that with colored pencil. And I think if I were to do it again, I would do it, oh, maybe with, uh, uh, with watercolor pencil. I think that's what I'm going to try for this one is a little bit of watercolor pencil. We'll see how that turns out. And I'm going to, I'm looking at my orange here is not quite dry, which is good for me. I'm going to paint a little different blue. This is cerulean blue that I'm painting on here. It's just going to be a little different color than our Windsor blue. That's okay. Maybe this set of bulbs has a couple of different blue ones. Normally I would put, I don't know, like green in there or something, but I just thought the green wasn't quite right. So now I've just dipped, I should say what I'm doing here, while I'm doing it, I have dipped my orange that I was using, my pure orange, 
and just put just the tiniest bit of that red in it. There we go. Just the tiniest bit of that red in there to darken it, just to change it a little bit. There we go. I think that's pretty good so that we can see that there's a difference. And I'm going to put a little bit of that orange in my yellow. That might be a little too much, but it'll be fine. Everybody knows the deal. Whoop. When you look at it, nobody will say, oh, there's too much yellow. They'll go, oh, I totally can see that you've got that roundness on there. Now I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to try a little bit of my cerulean. Let's see how we can do, how we can do it with that. Cerulean is still a little bit wetter. Might flow a little bit more. I hope I'm still on camera. Said I'm a little bit out of sorts here because I haven't made many videos recently, but I'm going to turn things around right now. There we go. I think I'm going to leave it at that. That's a cute little card. Whoa, wrong way. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how I wrote on there. If you if you are good at calligraphy, you won't need that little bit. Uh, you'll just be able to write on there. You know what? Actually, before we do that, we got one one thing we need to do. Okay, so um, our wire that connects all these together. I tried. I have a sheet over here. I tried many, many, many different. Here we go sizes of brushes and squiggles and everything like that I tried very hard and what I came up with is if I use a number two rigger this happens to be a Grumbacher number two rigger uh, I can I can get the touch light enough and on a card this size that cord doesn't seem too uh, too big so I'm going to go ahead and try to do this, and I'm just going to put it on in some looping kind of a way here. Let's see, i got a big hair right on there. How did I do this before? There we go. It flowed a lot more freely. I think I held it back in my hand hand just a little bit more come from this side there we go oh that's better and then I'll connect the two sides I'll just do it on the front there we go connected the two sides there's our cord connecting everything up I'm going to let this dry and I'll be right back to finish it up with you. Right here we are. Our card is dry. We've got one thing left to do and that is we want to write on our saying Happy Holidays. Here we go. So I've just got a piece of cardboard. It was actually the back of a, of a pad of paper. I'm just going to put this on. I've got a very light pencil. I'm just going to make some basic reference lines for my lettering very lightly that'll work on the bottom one right about there for the top I think we're good, good to go with that I'm gonna pull out my watercolor pencils these are the Prismacolor watercolor pencils got a nice red here. Let's see if you can see what color that is. There you go. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. A nice red. And we're going to start five letters trying to get it mostly centered. I'm going to start right about here. 
like I said, for me, this is the most frightening part of this whole card is handwriting on it. Let's see, but whoever gets this card is going to love it anyways. Whether it's perfect or whether it's not perfect, it's going to be all right. Oops, let's see, I want to... There we go. And I've messed up. Okay, I'm going to thicken a couple of lines. Right there, right there. And I'm going to come down here and write holidays. If I can, let's see, trying to keep about the same height. Another H. Let's see, that comes off. Like that, into an eye. Into a D. Finish with an S. Sticking a couple of lines up here, put on my eye. And if you wanted to, you could leave it like that. Or since it is watercolor, you can go back over the top of it with a little bit of water and really activate those colors. There we go, we're getting it, we're getting it, we're getting it. And again, I'm using my thin, this is a number, what is this? This is the number two Grumbacher rigger or liner brush. And the nice thing about this is all we're going to do is touch that with a little bit of water and it, sh it comes out very vibrant. There we go. Almost done with this one. Like I said, this for me is the most frightening part by far, <laughs> by far. I, I don't like handwriting. I don't like calligraphy. I'm willing to give it a try. I just don't feel as though I'm very good at it. And I get very nervous when I have to do it. I don't mind lining over it with the paintbrush. Which brings up the question, why don't I just do it with a paintbrush? I'm glad you asked. I don't just do it with a paintbrush because I've tried to do that before. And I get nervous in just the writing of it and it comes out no better than it does like this 
but I'm used to writing with a pencil and so I have a, some semblance of a little bit more confidence that I can do that. There we go. We're done with our holiday card. Oops, I'm sorry. We're not quite done. I've got some very light lines on here. I can go back and erase. And I just goofed it up. I'll get that off of there. Have no fear. I'll get all that off of there. I'm going to stop what I'm doing for right now. There's our holiday card. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video. Um, have a good one.